Wendy? Wendy. Yeah. Yeah, Steve? Wendy. Yeah. That's the murmuration. That's that's a sculpture. But we're not live. It's just so... Oh, oh, we're live. We're live now. Oh, we're live. Education. <laughs> Sorry. Right? Sorry. Zoo education. Sorry. Zoo adventures. Education. Wendy's telling me to come forward a little bit. How you guys doing today? Everybody all right? Hanging in there? Light the end of the tunnel? Might still be a long tunnel. I'm Steve, and this is Zoo Adventures. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Those of you that watched Rhino last week, and if you didn't watch Rhino, you need to go over to the zoo's website and check it out. What's today's animal? What's today's topic? Anybody remember? Some people call them the nope rope. I've seen danger noodles. I think those are bad words. Because snakes are amazing. Today's adventure, all about snakes. You ready to see one? I'm holding one. Ready, Wendy? Let's show them. Ta-da! Everybody say hi to King Tut. I don't, I don't think he heard you. Say hi to King Tut. Everybody say hi to King Tut. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because they're deaf. All snakes are. They don't even have ear openings. They don't even have little holes by the side of the head. King Tut's trying to, try, there we go. It's nice and warm. Yeah, it is. Now you did notice me wearing gloves. I haven't had them on before. That's more to protect the snakes from me and the animal ambassadors, the keepers that are taking care of these guys. These are our animal ambassadors, animals that go out and do programs with us. Amy was kind enough to get us set up this morning. But just in case, I decided to wear gloves today. Normally we don't have to, but I thought, you know what? Let's take one level of precaution. I won't change my gloves between animals because the animals are essentially in quarantine already. And if that's all I'm touching and that's all I'm going to do, then I don't think we'll have a problem. How cool is that? See that tongue going? <clears throat> Tasting the air. It doesn't really truly smell with his tongue, but he does taste the air. And it's forked. We'll talk about that over time. But it's a, it's a very important reason the tongue is forked has nothing to do with them being mean or bad. They can't sting you with it or anything. What a beautiful pattern, huh? King Tut is an Eastern King Snake. An Eastern King Snake. You'll find them from Jersey down through Pennsylvania, West Virginia, into North Carolina, down to Northern Florida over to like Mobile Bay or so in Alabama. Non-venomous. I am nowhere near as brave as the mothers. I'm not gonna be handling any venomous snakes today. I don't think that's why you tuned in. I hope it's not. <laughs> but these guys are really neat. They're <clears throat> Oifiophagus. Oifiophagus. I have no idea what that means, Steve. Oivephagus? Oifiophagus. Phagus. Eater? They're snake eaters. Their primary diet is other snakes. Wendy's got her job cut out for her today, trying to track yeah. and follow. I'm trying to help, but I'm not being very successful sometimes. Talking, wrangling, and sharing. But these guys are snake eaters. Their primary diet in the wild is snakes. Now, that doesn't mean that's all they eat. But they can eat, but again, primarily other snakes. Someone and asked if that's why he's called a king snake. King snake. Very good. It is. Kind of the king of the snakes. And he can eat venomous snakes. Where are you going there, bud? I don't think he knows. <laughs> they can eat venomous snakes, and it doesn't impact them. 
<laughs> nice little shot poking his head out from under his body. I mean, it's really? Come on. I get the fact that some people don't like snakes. But look at King Tut checking everybody out, coming over to say hi. And there's a wonderful digital distance between our friends out there and King Tut right now. Very secretive snakes. A lot of times they're going to be under rocks, under logs, waiting for other snakes. Again, that's their primary food. The pattern you see on King Tut is that kind of traditional Eastern king snake pattern, but they come in a lot of other colors, a lot of other patterns. They come in like speckled. The stripes might not be as, as distinct. Yeah, Wendy, what you got? We have a good question. Someone asked if he eats venomous snakes, how does it not hurt him okay. and make him sick? Great, great question. So we'll go ahead and, and slide into the venom poison discussion. I wasn't going to go there yet, but we'll go there since the question was brought up. You keep hearing the word venomous, right? Venomous snakes, non-venomous snakes. There's really no poisonous snakes. Now, there are a couple exceptions. But if you're a snake and you're, you have some sort of toxin, you're a venomous snake. And that venom is injected through their fangs. So they inject it into the body of their prey. And that venom then begins to break down the animal from the inside, might paralyze it, might start to kind of mess with the blood system, might even begin to mess with the muscular system, breathing therefore. And that venom helps to kill their prey and then begin the digestive process. Poison is different. Poison has to be eaten. You have to ingest it or you've got to have it on your skin. Poison ivy. I've got to bump into it and get it on my skin. Rat poisons um, have to be eaten by the rats. So since he's eating it, he's eating the animal, then the toxins aren't as aren't going to impact the snake as much. He's able to digest those toxins while he's eating the animal. And there might be some level of immunity to those as well. God, you got yourself into a knot there, bud. Not quite, but you're working on it. He's like, but it's a pretty, pretty day. You guys able to get outside a little bit? Have you seen the that Adventures in Education group on the Facebook page? The North Carolina Zoo's Facebook page, Adventures in Education? There's some cool outdoor activities. Our neighborhood naturalist, Bob, is taking you outside to learn some cool stuff. Linda and Kathy, two of our major play folks here, are teaching some really cool ways to get outside and play. The zoo classroom is going on. Some neat science stuff. And we just had another one. Um, Corinne Kendall, Dr. Kendall, Corinne, is doing some dog experiments, some pet experiments you guys can do at home. So that's that. Adventures in Edzucation. It's a Facebook group that you can get to on the zoo's Facebook page. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's kind of cool. Let's tell you a little bit about King Tut here. King Tut, an older snake. Make sure I get my number right here. King Tut's pushing 21. Not exactly sure where King Tut originated from. He was a donation from Davidson County Community College. He was part of their herp collection for a while. His diet at the zoo, he gets one or two mice every week, depending on the on the, on the week, kind of rotates back and forth. He's a little over two pounds, a little over four feet long. That's about average for these guys. That's about average. But the really cool thing about King Tut is although he's doing a great job today of holding on right here, he has a little bit of a muscular challenge in the back, on the back end of his body. A little bit of a muscular challenge. This is really cool to see. And to help King Tut with that, some of the care and wellness levels that we provide here at the zoo for this guy, he gets massage and acupuncture to help strengthen that back end. 
to increase the musculature back there to help him hold on. It looks like it's working. Yeah, it looks great. He's gotten a lot stronger. That is really cool to see. So it's neat to know that you can do that with a snake. He's actually getting a massage treatments. You were talking about spas a while back, Wendy, I believe, with the with the mud bass of the rhino. So King Tut is actually getting that kind of treatment too. So he gets those treatments and it's working. I mean, there was time when he wasn't able to really hold on. So to see that treatment and why, we're not sure why. I wish I had an answer for that. Why did he have that challenge back there? But the amazing care of the keepers and the vet team here, working out pretty well. King Tut, how about that? There's some people answering your questions. I believe today, I think Kathy and Linda, uh, I bet Leslie's on there answering questions. I see Bob um, popping Bob up. Bob has answered some questions. So please shout those questions out. They're happy to answer them. You see that Wendy is sharing some as well. So while I put her, while I put King Tut back, and he is a male, while I put King Tut back, I'm gonna get another snake friend. Hold on. I'll share our uh, beautiful marsh view down here at the North Carolina Zoo. We're down at the marsh just outside the entrance. While Steve and I were out here waiting to go live, we we saw a uh, what we think was a sharp shin hawk. We see some geese. We saw turtles, at least three or four species of frog. We saw some bluegill fish. We saw that really cool Canada goose. Yeah, we, we tried to speak to the geese, but they didn't understand us, but we did uh, add A at the end of it, and they seemed to <laughs> stick around longer. Oh, our little turtle friend is right here. Oh, yeah? Let's see if we can zoom in on him. Can you guys at home see our little turtle friend hanging out? He's right here. Almost ready. We've got some fish swimming around. I'm losing him. There we go. I think that's a bluegill. Our little turtle friend basking in the sun, having a good day. It's a beautiful day outside. I hope everyone has a chance to get outside today. And it looks like Steve has our second guest. How cool is this? Some of you who've been tuning in to Leslie's Zoo Classroom have met this snake before. Some of you that have come to the zoo in the past might have met even King Tut. You might have met Griffin, the northern pine snake. Griffin is a beautifully colored snake. He's a lot bigger than King Tut. Griffin is pushing in at maybe five feet. Ooh, there's a... Is that a good shot? Yeah. Look real close at the eyes, guys, since that's there. Look at the eyes. See that little brow ridge? See that little bony structure over the eye? Look close. Can you see that little structure over the eye? It's really important to the pine snake. These guys are burrowers. These guys are burrowers. They're getting under the ground. And that brow ridge, that bony structure right over the eye, helps keep the dirt and mud out of the eye as they're burrowing through. The nose is kind of pointy. What a great shot. I'm assuming. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you, Griffin, for showing that off. I wanted to make sure people saw that because it makes you what makes you very unique and also makes you very hard to find. These guys are really rare and it's hard to find them in general because they're under the ground. They hang out in those longleaf pine forests. Their favorite food are small mammals that they find in those burrows. And he's a constrictor, another non-venomous snake. So when he finds his prey, he wraps those coils around his prey. And then he squeezes really tightly. It's kind of like being in a hug you don't want to be part of. Ready, do me a favor. Everybody, this is kind of what it feels like if you're in the coils of a snake that's a constrictor. Take a deep breath, hold it. Again, 
Don't let it out. Again, don't let it out. One more. And pretty soon there's no more space for air. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's okay, Wendy. Glad to <sighs> Thank you. I'm a, I forgot to tell Wendy. Whew. And that's what's going on. So the prey items, they simply can't breathe. So that's one reason that their that constriction works. The other is if it's a small enough prey item, he's actually able to collapse the blood vessels and stop the blood from flowing. And that also kills the prey very quickly. Staring contest. Staring contest. My money's on Griffin and King Tut and our next, next next snake guest and any snake you ever visit and see. I haven't blinked yet, Steve. You haven't blinked yet? You're still gonna lose. My eyes are hurting. You know why you're gonna lose? I'm trying. He has no eyelids. He cannot blink. That's not fair. Well, you know, you've played the game. You just didn't get all the rules. I forgot. You forgot. That's okay. So yeah, no eyelids, but there's a scale over the eye that's shed when they shed their skin. Even that scale, so if it does get scratched, if it does get kind of messed up in some way, that's okay. He's going to shed that scale anyway. So no blinking. Again, no ears. They can't hear. When I ask people that tell me they're not real big fans of snakes, I say, you know what, that's okay. You don't have to be fans of everything. But you should respect them. They've all got a job to play. They've got a role in the environment. A lot of that is pest control. What? Really? Pest control? Yeah. So they're eating animals, small mammals, typically, rats, mice, animals like that, that can transmit diseases to you and I. I'd much rather have a snake in my house than a mouse or a rat. So it's nice to have the snakes around. Now, I get that there's some dangerous snakes out there. I totally, totally get that. But not every snake is dangerous. As a matter of fact, more than likely, the animal you come across is going to be a rat snake, maybe a king snake, a small gopher snake, all animals you kind of want to have around. Garter snakes. What do you want to see? Talk about the... The, the pattern? Okay. I do want to let you guys know, the little garter, that little... Garter snakes are slug eaters, so they're great in your yard, in your gardens. There's these animals you want to have around. So have that level of respect. Now I'm not don't go pick them up, guys. That doesn't mean you gotta go find the shovel the first time you see one. Let them be. I don't think when I ask people why, they don't a lot of times they don't know. Why don't you like snakes? Oh, because it's a snake. Oh. Okay. I don't get it, but I, okay. But they're so different from you and I. No arms, no legs. Can't blink, can't hear. Sense vibrations very well. Have these really amazing scales. I mean, imagine guys, this snake can climb a tree. No arms and legs, try that. No, don't try that. Not a good idea. Wendy, are you able to show them the, sc the scales of this guy? I'm trying to see some really You're good. You're good right there. Right there. Can you see that little line in the scale? I know I'm asking you to look hard. You get those observation skills kicking. You see a little line on those scales. There's a peak in that scale. That's called a keeled scale. The bottom of a boat has a keel, almost like a ridge that runs down it. And you can see that on this snake too. And that keeled scale helps them when they're burrowing, helps them get around when they're burrowing. There's a little tiny line. On each one of these, you can see a little, you see a little, little tiny, tiny line? line. Right in the middle. I know it's hard. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not. Maybe no, you're good. No, they're there. You're good? I just have to get it zoomed. Little ridges. They're little tiny ridges. Mo a lot of snakes have smooth scales. But the pine snake has, a, has that keeled scale. And that keeled scale helps them when they're in the burrows. And believe it or not, if say they catch one mouse and they have it in their, in their mouth, they can actually pin other mice in the burrows because of those keels, kind of push up against the, the side of a wall and pin another mouse in there. So they can actually take more than one prey item 
at a time. So we mentioned that he's about five pounds, about twice as heavy, five feet, maybe a little longer than five feet long. He's vocal. A lot of pine snakes, a lot of gopher snakes in general are kind of bullies with a smiley face at the afterwards. They're kind of bullies. They make a lot of hissing noise. They're kind of sassy. We asked Amy, kind of give us an idea, give us a personality uh, trait of, of uh, Griffin. And she said that he's sassy. He's vocal. He's kind of, a, he's kind of, this is who I am. Don't mess with me. He wags that tail, rattles that tail, puffs up, gets all big. And then when you pick him up, he's like, oh, okay, this is cool. This is cool. I'm down with that. Let's go teach somebody something. <laughs> so it's kind of neat. Now that, that's who Griffin is. Again, a northern pine snake. Uh, how old is he? I want to make sure I get my number right. How old is he? He is maybe going to be eight soon. I've got a little note over there on just those real specific details. He's going to be eight. He was another donation. He came from Rowan Wild Adventure. Thank you, Rowan. And tells us another of our native snake stories. These guys are dependent on fire. I'm going to put him away and kind of chat. They're dependent on fire. What? That's a snake, Steve. What do you mean dependent on fire? Well, their habitat, the pine forests, are dependent on, on fire. And the prey items there that live there need the forest intact. So fire is an important element in maintaining those forests. So fire is actually really important to maintain the population of the northern pine snake. Putting him in it back in his bag. Amy set all this up for us, so that was very kind of her. She's gonna, she dropped him off. Um, usually, if Wendy and I are doing a snake program, we just go get the snakes. But during this time of coronavirus, we're taking more precautions. So right now, Amy, well, actually all of our animal ambassador keepers, we have uh, Amy and Hannah, uh, Natalie and April are all helping us. They're actually gathering everybody up for us, putting them in our coolers because we make sure they're safe and sound. And then we take them, we do the program, we do the fun stuff and take them back. <laughs> and they take them all out of the box and everything for us. They're all masked. They're working in teams. So there's two and two always. They're not mixing and not mashing at all. Everybody's all gloved up. They're working, they're disinfecting everything they touch so both the teams don't become infected either. So it's a lot going on. And that's not just going in an animal bastard world, that's happening all across the zoo in any of the animal sections. One more snake. You guys ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here while you get it because You sure? It's our it's it's a big snake, so I yeah. want people to have take a deep breath. Remember all of the cool things we've been learning about these snakes. If you have, if you're a little bit of frightened, if you've been a little scared or a little bit uh, I'm not so sure. I hope you're feeling a little tiny bit better. Yeah. Because they do have a vital role to play. They've got a really important role to play in the environment. And this last snake, I will say, is a beautiful snake. Would you agree, Steve? Gorgeous. I think there are, there are snakes that I can definitely say are beautiful. And this one, for me, has rainbow colors on it. So what in life that has rainbow colors on it aren't beautiful? Since they can't hear because they don't have any ears, I like freckles. Aha, see? See, guys? We're going to show you a beautiful snake. Here we go. All right. Oh, and he looks good, too. Now, freckles is also our heaviest snake in education. So uh, we also have to make sure we're oh. lifting her properly to make sure she's comfortable in hand, that Steve is comfortable with her in hand, oh. just because she is she Good is a, a heavy gal, like we talked about with the rhinos. You don't want to talk about weight with the ladies, but we'll, we'll tell you how much she weighs because she can't oh. hear us talking about her anyway. So this is Freckles. And Freckles is a Maclots python. I'm going to get in the sun. Oh, you can see the rainbow already. Can you see the rainbow? Can you see that sheen? It's beautiful. Snake people out there might have heard of a rainbow boa. This is not that. This is a Maclots python. Their nickname is the freckled python. Can you see where that nickname comes from? Can you see those freckles on her side? That's where her name itself comes from. Look at that beautiful animal. We'll wait till she slows down to get her face because she's a little we'll excited. See if she will. 
She's maybe seven and a half feet long. She's about 12 pounds. So what is that? A gallon and a little bit of milk? A gallon of milk is eight pounds. So a gallon and a half of milk is what she weighs. Eight feet long? That's me plus two feet. That might be as high as this whole structure here. What do you think there, Freckles? This is a non-native snake. Non-native, not from the area. This is an animal from Northern Australia, not venomous again, a big constrictor. Imagine those coils wrapping around a prey item. All those other characteristics are true. Can't blink, no ears, no arms and legs. Freckles, a Maclots python. Born, some of these animals, we say they're born in 2002. Plus or minus a couple years. <laughs> they're not exactly sure sometimes what the hatch date was on some of them. Some of more donations, like this one. This one actually came through a couple people. A vet student had freckles for a while. And then he donated to, or that person, I don't know if it was he or she. That person donated him to our past head vet here at the zoo. And then when Ryan left, he donated freckles to the North Carolina Zoo's Animal Ambassador Collection. I don't know if you can see, can you see the scars? Let you guys know those scars are exactly that. They are, they're healing. And actually, every time that freckles sheds, a few more of those scales come back. We believe, because that happened even before the vet got her, we believe that she got too close to a heat lamp. And heat lamps are hot. All of this, you gonna hold on there if I use one hand for a sec? All of this used to be covered with white. And now you can see that some of the scales are coming back. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Can you see the little, can you see these little hooks? Remnants of legs. Point them out again. You see them here and over that side. Let's see if that freckles will show you that, that forked tongue. That forked tongue, really important. Just the same reason you guys have two eyes, you have two ears, two nostrils. You're able to determine where a location is because you have two things. You can hear a sound coming from your right or your left. You can actually detect a little bit of smell from right to left. Eyes, you know if it's on your right or your left. The fork tongue of the snake does the same thing. Remember, they're smelling the air, tasting the air with their tongue. So scent particles fall on the tongue. They bring it into something called a Jacobson's organ. So you stick your tongue out, and then things come, stick, scents fall on it. Pull it in her mouth, stick it into a Jacobson's organ. No, you and I don't have the Jacobson's organ. And they taste the air with that tongue. Also amazing, I know that Wendy can do this too. Can you see those pits? <laughs> she keeps moving. Freckles like, what is that? Those pits help help him help her sense heat. She's not a pit viper. Oh, there's my face again, guys. Hi. Hi, everybody. That was Wendy. We, we love you, Wendy. You touched that screen in the wrong place. So those pits are one of the things that she's able to use to sense her prey. Those are heat pits. She's able to sense heat with those wonderful pits. There's that rainbow again. I I see it from here. Can you see that rainbow yeah. pattern on that? That's so pretty. So pretty. Often found out hanging near water in Northern Australia. Misnamed the water python sometimes. They are terrestrial. Everybody you met today is a terrestrial or a land snake. It won't be near water. Larger mammals, fish sometimes, birds, eggs. Really neat. Snake. 
So these heard Wendy. You guys heard Wendy talking about them being really pretty. What do you think about... Oops, don't get up too high. Do I worry about her being up around my neck? No, it's just not something we need her to do. We don't need freckles doing that. I asked... Again, I, we all, we're lucky again. We have a wonderful relationship with the animal staff here, and then the animal ambassador keepers are actually in conservation education and science, like Wendy and I. So I asked Amy to help us with personalities and things, because they're working with them all the time. We know this. We know the nat. We know the animals. We know kind of where they're from and what they eat and how they live. But since they are all the time, um, we asked her to give us some personality traits. Kind of, you know, what's about them, so I can share that with you all. So you can get to know our animals as well. And all the animals, even though our animals have done a great job. <laughs> Is it warm? I bet it's You're nice and warm I bet up it's there. Warm right there. She likes to go behind my hair a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice warm? Yeah, she tries to go behind my hair and in my armpits. Nice. <laughs> I, oh, come on. I want to read what Amy wrote. I couldn't, I could not, I couldn't fake it. I couldn't even go there. So Amy, bless her heart, she came up with um, zodiac signs for some of them. So wait, here, I'm going to read it so I can get it right. Amy. This semi-aquatic snake, because they're near, near water, ruled by water, and as a cancer, can be a little moody, but is really a gentle giant. <laughs> Thank you very much, Amy. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Um, but again, a gentle, you can see that she's sweet, hanging out with me. She's all curled up. Essentially, all I am is a tree. It's very, very uh, humbling, shall we say. Do they like me? No. They understand my smell? Maybe. But I'm just a tree. I'm just a tree to them, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> Eating once a week, rats. Small rats in the wintertime, larger rats in the, su in the summer when they're a little more active. All right, I do have one bio fact I want to share with you for sure, one or two real quick. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. This will take a second. Oh, is he so strong? Someone asked uh, why we put them into bags to transport them. Oh, great. Great question. We put them in bags so it's a little bit more uh, comfortable. Is that a good word? I might need to help him, so I am going to film it. and help. You got it? I got it. I'm going to have to just let go. So what you Steve, see Steve doing is we put them in a bag first, and we tie it very tightly uh, with room to move. And then we put them in this cooler, and then we also <laughs> bungee the cooler. Now, that's just for travel. That's not where they live. No, yeah, good point. Thank you, Wendy, for saying um, that. So if we're, let's say we're in a vehicle and we're traveling to your, your student's school. Um, let's say we're in a car accident. This keeps them nice and safe, nice and tightly safe in the vehicle. So first responders don't have to worry about a <laughs> snake in the back seat. Um, and also, we don't have to worry about our animals. Uh, being injured if there is an accident so they're nice and tightly put away all right i'm gonna take my gloves off now now I've, we're done working with that with that uh, with the animals i'm gonna take my gloves off remember how to take gloves off some of you have seen it before take it off turn it inside out grab it put your hands inside this glove and then turn that one inside out now i don't touch any of the stuff on the outside a little helpful hint there Two things real quick. I want to share a skeleton. People ask a lot of times, do they have bones? What do you think? I know guys that are proud of their six packs. How about that for a one, two, three, four, six, five, six, five, six, five, how many, I don't know how many packs there are there. Back here is the little tiny tail. So snakes are not a head and a long tail. They're a small head, long body, and a tiny tail. Just kind of cool to see that's all that's going on inside. It's one of the reasons snakes are so strong and so mobile. All of that able to move. They can throw those coils around their prey and squeeze really hard. We did that as well. Another question we get a lot of times is, do snakes have teeth? You tell me if you see this. This is a huge python skull. Replica, replica. But how about that for teeth? Down. Down. And then that's just so you can see the bottom jaw there. So they sure do. But notice how all of them point backwards. All of the teeth point backwards. So once they bite onto their prey, the teeth are like hooks. The prey can't escape. 
prey tries to escape, they essentially get stuck more on those teeth. A couple cool bio facts. They do shed their skin, as you guys know. We are going to do another segment on snakes down the road. Because there's a couple really things we didn't get into much. We didn't get into... I'm not going to forget this time. We didn't get, in, to get into poison and venom very much. We didn't talk about the medical side of venom. Guys, the venom of copperheads is being looked at to help breast cancer survivors. Really? So there's a lot of that we want to talk about and share as well. Kind of more of the, the role of snakes beyond just the pest management, beyond just taking care of animals you and I don't want to have in our homes. There's a lot of other things that snakes do in our environments. Got a couple snake, got a couple crafts to share with you. <sighs> this is fun. Like a thumbprint snake. How many cool colors could you make? The longest snake ever recorded, 33 feet long. Can you make a 33 foot long one of these? As long as a school bus? I don't think so. Maybe you could. That's the difference between venom and poison a little bit. We mentioned venom has to be injected or stung. Think your snakes, think uh, scorpions, um, think spiders. They're injecting, honeybees are injecting through a sting. Poison, I've got to eat it or I've got to touch it. I've got to rub it against my skin. Can you figure out what's which, which is which? And then Nikki came up with some really fun, act, some really fun questions. Some of this might be a research opportunity for some of you. Some of them we might have answered today. Kind of cool. All these on that Adventures in Education Facebook group. I want to show you the smallest snake. I don't have a snake, I have an example of it. But, oh, place it for my daughter. <laughs> Imagine a snake that could curl up on that SD drive. The thread snake, four inches long, can curl up on a quarter, can curl up and hang out on that little tiny thing. So snakes, amazing diversity, amazing variety. And they do an amazing job. They're actually taking care of us and we're afraid of them. Stop being, you can be afraid, that's okay, but don't be scared, does that make sense? Be respectful. Whew. Everybody doing well? So far so good? Hanging in there? What were you saying? Wendy had her hand up. We have our, uh, our donation button. Oh, the donation button. Yes, please. Those of you guys that have helped us in the past, thank you guys so much. It really does matter. We're so happy you guys are helping us out a little bit. So if you want to, if you feel so inclined to click that donation button, we truly appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Fish. Sorry, a fish just jumped behind Wendy. Um, that was kind of neat. Um, shout out, teachers. Teacher Appreciation Day yesterday. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. It is such a challenging time. And teachers that are new at home right now, parents, I know you're working hard too. So let's use that teacher as kind of a general broad thing. So our dedicated teachers that are there for your students all the time, Thank you so much for everything you're doing that way. And for those new homeschool teacher slash parents doing so many multiple roles, thank you as well at this time of coronavirus. Closed but still caring. Zoo will open in accordance to the governor's plans. Um, we'll have a plan put in place that will go along with that. Um, sea lion saying, we're happy to hear that. That's awesome to know. But currently still closed and will be for a while. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, we think. Surely, right? It's gotta be. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to today's Zoo Ed Adventures. Again, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock. We're so happy to see you. We're happy that you guys are staying safe. It's an awesome privilege to come into your classrooms, your dining rooms, your decks, wherever you guys are watching us from today. Thanks again, guys. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe, and we'll see you Friday at 10 o'clock. They'll mammal then. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.